Hey everybody, thank you for joining us and welcome to Perfect Idol, brought to you by Bang Zoom Entertainment and Star Child Records. My name is Keith Silverstein. Now you probably know me as Judge Number Three. Usually when I'm stopped on the street, it's because people know me as Judge Number Three. Today though, I'm kind of taking over the show. That's right. I'm, we're not going to do the straight interview that we did with Mommy and we did with Patrick. I'm taking over. It's kind of my thing. It's my rules. Pretty much anything I want to do. Yes. Um, so today what I decided we wanted to talk about, or I wanted to talk about, is the online community. That's you guys. And how the online community can be used by a voice actor to help them succeed and get more gigs and what have you. And I thought to myself, <clears throat> who better to get to discuss this than Christina V. So here we have Christina V. Hi. here with us today. She's here against her will. She's glued to the I seat. Can't move. <laughs> Just her hands and her face and nothing more. So, uh, Christina, first off, just in case they live under a rock and they don't know yes. who you are, give them a little idea of who you are and some of the stuff you've done. Hey, guys. It's me. I host this show sometimes when it's not being taken over. Um, I'm also a voiceover actor. I've done uh, roles like um, in a bunch of anime. I think one of the most popular is Madoka. I'm Homura in not, that, not Madoka. Um, I'm also in the upcoming Final Fantasy Final Fantasy Type Zero as Sync. I'm in League of Legends. I'm in a bunch of JRPGs. I'm also in original animations like La La Loopsy Girls and Lego Friends. And I've been doing this for about seven or eight years, maybe longer. I like La La Loopsy Girls. Yeah, you do? I don't know anything about it, but I love the name. It's awesome. <laughs> La La Loopsy. I just want to tell it, people it I It rolls off the that. tongue, La La Can Loopsy. I try it? I haven't worked on it, just disclaimer. Uh, I also worked on La La Loopsy Girls. I play uh, <laughs> Loopsy. <laughs> <laughs> on that show. I have to do a real high voice for Loopsy, but uh, they throw some, some effects on it and it's perfect. So thank you. Yeah. That means a lot. Thank you so much. Of I'm course. glad I, I glued you to that chair. <laughs> um, so let's start off. I want to talk to you about the online community just a little bit. Yes. Tell me about, oh, we're getting serious? Yeah. Okay, we, we're getting serious. Wow. I'm going to put on my serious voice for a second here. You're really good at that. Uh, well, we're getting serious now. So uh, Marketing. How do you market yourself? Let's let's assume that Ooh. I know nothing about this online community. I've never used FaceTube or UBook, and you're going to explain to me how I would. Market I prefer myself. my face. My face is the way to go. You you have a very nice face. Thank you. You're we're welcome. So I think the most interesting thing about the online community right now is that as voice actors, we're the first generation to kind of test out the waters to see what works and what doesn't work with social media. So um, I feel like the most important thing um, for building an online presence is being professional. Um, and that involves keeping your personal life and your professional life kind of separate. So um, what I've done, and we're talking about building a brand, right? Building a brand, yeah, marketing yourself. So the, the first mistake that I see a lot of people make um, when they're trying to become professional is by posting a lot of things that are happening in their personal life that maybe aren't good. And you kind of want to, you know, make a separate account for that. Let me, so make, you can let me keep, make a note of that real yeah, quickly. Yeah, so Just... keep it positive. You definitely want to keep it positive when you're, when you're on Facebook and Twitter. Um, also, know your sound and know your fan base. Um, for example, I know a lot of people who watch my things are into anime and into video games. So I make it a point to share those articles that I feel are relevant okay. with that community. Um, and uh, retweeting other people's stuff. That sure. is also, yeah. Um, and it really is just about patience and building up that, that audience. And um, lost my train. The thought, and lost and my snapping train. brings that back? Yeah. <clears throat> Can you snap online? Is there a way to... Can you get more followers by snapping? Um, yes, it Is just kind of translates through the text. They really just know that you're snapping. Um, so where were we? You were just telling us how to, I think you answered pretty well, actually, how to brand yourself. Yeah. Uh, you stay positive, post, figure out what your fan base is, you said. Mm -hmm. uh, post to that fan base specifically. Don't cross your personal stuff. Yes, exactly. So no nudes. No nudes. It's... That's that's. Funny. I mean, on a separate on a separate account, maybe. Maybe, but under not. a different name. Uh, okay, gotcha. And that different name you use would be. <laughs> you don't use <laughs> just, it. Oh, you can just tell me. It's fun. Um, but I mean, <laughs> just know that Photoshop is very powerful, and I've it's seen some tool. pictures of me that don't exist except through Photoshop. That's not wow, fair. This is like going. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyways, yeah. let's get back fault. to being it's professional. Her fault. Yeah. I know, you're talking about being professional, and then you bring that up. 
<laughs> that was so <laughs> awkward. Now, here I am trying to professionally interview you. I had my I had my serious voice on earlier. And oh yeah, let's but get yeah. back to that. Serious but voice. yeah, then we messed so up. So branding, also a website. Of mm-hmm. course, of course, your website's very important. You want to make sure that it's professionally designed because graphic designers have an eye for things that you know you right. are not really conscious of. And um, so having a, a great website is very important because that's where you send your clients. Yeah. Um, so that would be my recommendation, um, knowing your sound, knowing how to design your website in a way that is not only attractive but also represents your voice. Right. Without using, I would say stay away from using like cartoon characters of mm-hmm. yourself um, only because that can give a pre disposition to what your voice sounds like when it might not be that way. Just leave it open for people to interpret. That makes sense. And that's for your website. Yes. Because like for me, I keep it separate. I have my professional website, which I've got you know demo reels on there yeah. if you want to hear it. I've got my, my resume. But it's very professional. You're not going to get stories. You might get some current projects I'm working on, but you're not going to get stories about what I worked on today or anything there. Yeah. But then on Facebook, you can follow more specifically kind of what I'm working on day to day. You, you kind of keep those separate as well? or. Yeah, I do. I actually, my website is more like a static thing where mm-hmm. it just has my, like my reels, my resume, um, and I just update that when I need to. And then uh, my Facebook is just, and Twitter, they're linked together. It's just day-to-day things. If I see something funny, I'll post that. Or if I have a new role coming out, I'll post that. Okay, very nice. Well, tell me, what are some of the uh, opportunities that you maybe got through through doing this, through doing online stuff and social media? Has anything opened up to you? So... So, I started to post videos of singing on YouTube maybe seven or eight years ago when YouTube was barely just a thing. And I thought that it was so amazing because rather than people having to have the link and download it to their computer, it was like an instant audience because you could just click on the link and there would be the song playing. It's like magic. Yeah, Yeah. so it really was. So I, I really felt like that was a great opportunity to to share my music and so I did that and I built up a pretty big following um, back in the earliest days when I would do this and this was before I was getting a lot of professional work this was like high school college early college years Um, and this was just an outlet for me um, to do what I loved and um, I was lucky enough to find an audience and once I found my audience which turned out to be the anime and game crowd I really targeted the things that I did to stay consistent with that. And once in a while, I'll throw them a curveball and, and send them Disney songs or something that I sure, wanted yeah. to do. Um, but that was just to keep myself on my feet. And um, so I would post these songs. Right. And my thing was translating Japanese songs into English. So I did that. And my most successful video had about 5,000 views. Um, no, sorry. 5 million. What? <laughs> How do you jump from 5,000 to 5 million? Difference. It's a big, that's 5, a pretty big difference. Views. 5 million views. I once posted something that got 325 <laughs> views. So. Okay, 5 million I'm sorry, million did I say 325? Views. Yeah, I meant 20 trillion. Okay. <laughs> so, I'm kind of a big deal. I had a hard time with math in school. Yeah, that's I all right. You don't, you don't have to do a lot of math with voiceover. Not anymore, luckily. You have to count beeps. That's true. That's pretty simple math. I think it's so confusing sometimes. Like three is such a weird number. Honestly, I some, be four. sometimes I miss the first beat because there's all kinds of action going on in the scene, and then I yell at the engineer, and it's not really their fault, but That's but okay. I do anyway. It's one of those perks. Gotcha. <laughs> but let me ask <laughs> okay. you though, because you said you got all those views, and all these people were into it. But how, did that ever like translate to getting you some kind of work, or was it just yeah. to build a fan base? Um. So. Uh, the most, the first thing that happened to me was I, I met somebody at Anime Expo. I was introduced by Eric, and he said that okay. he was a fan of my online videos. And it turns out he was uh, Ken Iadomi, who is the president of Bandai Entertainment. Not bad. Okay. Yeah, so he said that he really liked my, my fan dubs that I did of the show, and he said, because of me, they decided to translate the songs into English. In the show, in the official really? Uh huh. So that made me feel really happy. And so maybe two years later, uh, he asked me to be a part of a show called K-On, um, which has a character who sings. And um, that was very, very, very fun. And uh, I also got to do the promotion for the show Haruhi, which I did the fan dub for. I got to dress up as her and promote the video. So that was really great. And uh, not too long ago, maybe two years ago, um, there was a game called Adventure Time. Hey, Ice King, why'd you steal our garbage? And uh, they wanted me to sing in this, the, the people who were working at the game company. So they sent my YouTube channel to the head people at Cartoon Network. Wow. Yeah, to approve my voice for this game. 
That's really cool. That's yeah. amazing. You got all that. I mean, and they just actually sent your they YouTube video. They just sent my YouTube, not my YouTube channel. Just like, hey, this is a girl we want to sing. Please listen to her stuff and give us the okay if she can be in our game. So. Okay, yeah. so that's that's great. And and did that also help then with with voice acting then in terms of um, getting you actual voice acting gigs? It sounds like you got some singing gigs out of it. I got some, you definitely yeah. got some attention. Um. I did get the K-On. K-On was... You got the K-On. Yeah, it was a voice acting right. gig. Um, and other than that, I mean, I've sent to my YouTube videos, because the people I work with are very, very skilled at mixing and doing things like that. So I would send those to, like, I got my first agent that way. When people wow. say, hey, I need a, a singing rep from you, um, I would send them a YouTube video. Cool. Do you still use those as your main, like, audition? Wait, does it still do stuff for you, or do you are you more kind of in the normal lane of, you know, agent auditioning and... Yeah, I mean, agent auditioning is definitely the main way that I get my work, but every once in a while there'll be like a surprise from my YouTube page. Right. Surprise. Yeah. Surprise. Well, so it didn't, it didn't hurt, though, to have like five million views to get started, which is good stuff. Yeah, it didn't hurt. Um, it definitely got me exposure, and it also kind of let me know like, hey, maybe I have something here, maybe I can make a living off of this, and I'm glad that I have been able to. Okay, so are there some, like, just straight do's and don'ts for the online community? Like, if you want to promote yourself online, I mean, if you just really simplified it, like, what should people absolutely do and absolutely not do online? Okay, what you don't want to do is, like I said before, keep your personal, all the negativity. Um, don't, don't put that on your professional page. I'd say create a different account so that you can talk about the more everyday things that happen. And also, um, when you're posting like a song on YouTube, make sure that it's the highest quality possible. And that seems goes for voice acting right. reels, maybe you made a reel of your voice acting. Don't post just anything. Make sure that it's really high quality because that's your first impression that you're sending out to people. And it stays on there. I mean, that's kind it's of the, forever, that's yeah. that big thing about the internet that this generation is kind of figuring out for the first time, which is that it, once you put it up there, it's always there. Yeah. So I guess if you put a bad song or a bad audition up there, I mean, it, it won't necessarily haunt you forever or mm -hmm. dictate your career, but it will be there for people to see. Yeah. So really, th I guess think about what you're putting out there under your name. Yeah, really, and um, yeah, just make sure it's the highest quality it can be. Yeah. Great. Well, it sounds like we got a lot of really, really good advice from Christina V. Thank you so much for helping us out with that. I'm actually, I've taken a few notes, and I'm going <laughs> to I'm gonna make some changes. I'm definitely going to take those nudes down, if that's possible. Um, we'll see. I guess everything's the there forever. The forever. I, I, that's what they say, but uh, for the right money, I don't know. Maybe I can get rid of stuff. This is going to turn like that one movie that just came out where they, like, attacked the cloud headquarters and, like, Right. It. That's. I may have to do that. May, I may have to attack have the to. cloud headquarters. And maybe Christina will have no choice but to attack cloud headquarters with me. So thank you so much, everybody, for true, for, for for joining us. You're scared of cloud headquarters? Like cloud soldiers are going to attack us and we're, they're going to cloud ruin our lives? Perfect idols. <laughs> You're the best. You're the best, Perfect Idols. Thanks for joining us. we got a lot more coming up, so keep watching Perfect Idol. See you soon. See you soon.今ここにいる理由。タイフェストム専用。指向制御。体幹操縦式有人兵器。ファフナー。選ばれた者しか動かせない。僕らの。長く続く戦いに世界が疲弊していく中もし互いの存在が理解できたら戦いは終わるのではないかそんなかすかな希望が世界の片隅で生まれようとしていた あなたはそこにいますか
未知の希望が新たな戦いとともに訪れたその日僕らの最後の時間が始まった。